Welcome to part one of the Duralities tutorial series on video game development. This series of tutorials will be using all open source software so that the only cost to get started in developing your first video game will be the time that you spend watching and the desire to complete your first video game. This tutorial will be in full. This means it is not required to know anything about the open source software used in this tutorial series. I will do my best to keep this tutorial for anyone to follow along. There may be a few of you that already have experience with the topics discussed here. In this case, I have outlined each part of the tutorials so it will be easy for the experienced and beginners to jump right to the parts of interest. I have also titled each tutorial to a specific task of interest. Feel free to watch from the beginning to the end or jump around to subjects of study because this series of tutorials is for beginners to a moderate advanced levels. The only hardware that is required is your computer and a three button mouse. The keypad is also very handy, but not required. If you do not have any of these free softwares, take this time to pause, download, and install because they will be needed to follow along with the series. I have included the links to these completely free open source softwares below. Welcome back and congratulations. You are now a proud owner of some very powerful software. In fact, all the free software you just downloaded and installed compares to other software that would have cost you well over 1,000 US dollars. If you already opened some of this software, you might be a bit overwhelmed by all the buttons before you. Do not worry because I will guide you to become a moderate advanced level in using these softwares in no time at all. I'd like to start by taking a quick look at the software we will be using most of the time called Blender. When open, you will see a default cube in a 3D viewport surrounded by an assorted buttons. Also notice the screencast on this 3D viewport that shows you what mouse buttons and keyboard keys I am pressing to help you follow along. Blender is an open source 3D editing software that has been and will continue to be developed. It is used by 3D artists in now many different ways. Some artists use Blender to design landscapes, architectural buildings and furnishings, short animated films, logos, special effects and videos, anything the artistic mind can think of, and of course, video games. In other words, there is a lot that Blender can do just by itself. To keep this tutorial focused on video game aspect, I will cover the game engine render setting found at the top. Blender also comes equipped with different layout settings that display all the buttons that are needed for the task at hand. This is also found at the top. By changing the layout to game logic from the drop down menu, you will see some of the viewports change to different settings and display different kinds of buttons. Down at the bottom we see a viewport called the logic editor. This logic editor can be used by a game developer to tell Blender game engine how they wish their created object to interact with other created objects without using any programming code. This is a very handy tool to use for small projects, yet I have discovered that it becomes very difficult to read and keep organized when working with larger projects. For example, if we were to make a light circuit schematic, we could easily draw a few lines to the bulb from an energy source without any labels and still be able to make sense of the diagram. Yet, if we were to try the same approach when drawing a schematic for a motherboard computer, it would end up looking like a bowl of spaghetti and much harder to make heads or tails where the schematic lines are coming from and going to. Well, Blender is equipped with a game engine that allows the game developers to connect a series of logic bricks so that the users will be able to interact with your game and makes it very easy to use. We will keep this section simple and easy to read by learning some programming language. Again, game logic bricks are great and very powerful, but to be a serious game developer, programming must be understood. So before we dive into Blender too far, allow me to cover some of the basics about programming. Python is a high level programming language. A high level language is a language that is closer to the language that we understand as humans. A low level language is a language that is closer to how the computers understand. In a high level language, you will see command words like if, if else, else, import, for, in, quit, and almost any kind of word you wish to set as a variable, function, class, or method. A low level would be read as binary numbers or a hex number, which is a combination of letters and numbers. 
Ultimately, the computer only knows how to read binary numbers, like a switch. One is on and zero is off. A high-level language gets interpreted into a low-level, so the computer knows what to turn on or off. Okay, back to Python basics before this tutorial becomes a computer science class. The Python software you install comes with a library of scripts we can use to our advantage instead of writing them out ourselves. For the computer to understand Python as a high-level language, it must be interpreted for the computer to understand. The Python software also comes with an, an interpreter that will do that for us. We can use this interpreter to write our scripts, but Blender also has a text editor for us to use, and Blender will in interpret our code for us. We do not really need the Python software for most of our projects. I had you install the Python software to have access to all the very useful libraries that come with it. Besides, after you become more familiar with Python, it is nice to know that Python has its own interpreter to work with if needed. There are a couple ways to access the Blender text editor. One way is to change the layout setting to scripting, as we did for the game logic layout. Another way to access the text editor is to just change any one of the viewport settings seen at the bottom of every viewport to text editor. Nobody expects to make errors, but it always seems to happen. Python is one of the best error handlers of any programming language today. I say handling because not only will Python tell us what error we made, it will in most cases tell us where exactly we made the error. Python also runs our scripts in real time line by line. This means the error will not be known by Python until it reaches our error. It becomes fairly handy because it allows us to be able to expect the error and handle them without stopping the runtime of our script. Explain more of this concept in later time when we start to understand more about the Python language. To open Blender System Council in a Windows version, click on Help at the top menu. Scroll down the drop menu and select Toggle System Council. You will see a command prompt like window appear. This window can be minimized while working with Blender and brought back up to check for errors that we may have acquired. The system console can also be used to see any output that is commanded to do by our script. To show this as an example, I will go over the basics of Python and use Blender system console to display the output. Python is known as OOP, which means Object Oriented Programming. Some may argue, but most of Python is just object programming until the object becomes oriented by a class method. In any case, and just for now, just remember that Python sees everything as an object. This means everything created in Python is a type of object and gets stored away in a physical place like storing letters in certain mail slots. We will start with the simplest type of object, which is called a Boolean. A Boolean is a data type having two possible values representing true or false, or one as true and zero as false. It is simply a binary type. Booleans are usually used when comparing objects with other objects. For example, we could ask Python to compare two or more objects if they are the same, more value, less value, same type, or true or false. Python will tell us if the way we ask how the objects compare is true or false as a Boolean object. I will explain more about comparisons later. Just remember a Boolean object is either true or false. Integers are whole numbers, whether positive or negative. Integers do not have a decimal. Long numbers, or longs, are integers of unlimited size, written like integers and followed by an uppercase or lowercase l. With floating point numbers, in a sense, computers are really integer machines and are capable of representing real numbers only by using complex codes. The most popular code representing Real numbers is called the IEEE -E -E floating point standard. The term floating point is derived from the fact that there is no fixed number of digits before and after the decimal point. That is, the decimal point can float. 
There are also representations in which the number of digits before and after the decimal point is set, called fixed point representations. In general, floating points representations are slower and less accurate than the fixed point representations, but they can handle a much larger range of numbers. Note that floating point numbers a computer can represent are just approximations. One of the challenges in programming with floating point values is ensuring that the approximations lead to reasonable results. If the programmer is not careful, small discrepancies in the approximations can snowball to the point where the final result becomes meaningless. Complex numbers are in the form of A plus B, J, where A and B are floats and J, or lowercase j, represents the square root of negative 1, which is an imaginary number. A is a real part of the number, and B is the imaginary part. Complex numbers are not used much in Python programming. A string is a string of characters put together in a certain order or a single character by itself. The characters can be letters, words, numbers, or symbols. To let Python know we want our object to be a string, the string object needs to be surrounded in a single or double quote. Why not just a single quote or a double quote? Because it helps us have string objects to be quotes as well. For example, a quote or an apostrophe would be used as part of the string, like so. A list is very much like a sequence shopping list. Items can be added to the list, removed from the list, and can be as long or short as you wanted. The first item on the list is identified with the number 0. The second item on the list is identified as 1, and the next item is 2, and so on. To define a list with Python, the items are enclosed in square brackets, and each item of the list is separated by a comma. Another nice thing about a list is that any object type can be put into a list. Tuple is another sequence data type that is similar to the list. Tuple consists of a number of values separated by commas. Unlike list, however, tuples are enclosed with parentheses. The main difference between list and tuples are lists are enclosed in square brackets, and their elements and size can be changed, while tuples are enclosed in parentheses and cannot be updated. I'll explain later why we would make a tuple instead of just making a list. For now, just remember, tuples can be thought of as read-only list. Dictionary is very much like a list, yet identified with a name rather than a number. Items can be added to the dictionary, can be removed from the dictionary, and be as long or short as you want it. There are no order to a dictionary because the items are identified with any name you choose. To define a dictionary with Python, curly brackets surround an identifying name followed by a colon, then the item to store in the dictionary, with commas separating the identifying names and items. As it is with the list, any object type can be added to the dictionary. That is all the time we have left for part one of this tutorial series. In part one, we learned about where to find very useful and free open source software, how to set Blender to a game render setting, changing Blender's layout settings, how to find Blender's logic editor, why we need to know programming, the difference between high and low level programming languages, the Python interpreter and library, the different ways to access Blender text editor, how to check for errors if we have any, how to access Blender's system console, object-oriented programming, and all the different types of object that Python can identify, such as a Boolean, integer numbers, long numbers, floating point numbers, complex numbers, strings, a list, a tuple, and a dictionary. Part 2 will begin with variables and some simple Python commands.